Hi, I'm Pamela. And I'm Susanna. Welcome to The Gussie, our weekly podcast for design junkies. At The Gussie, we break down the process of design and decode the many components that go into creating beautiful spaces, from treasure hunting to furniture layouts, textiles, and much, much more. We're friends and design partners who believe everyone should be able to create a stylish home that reflects who they are and how they want to live. Plus, we love to talk. Let's get into it. Hello, Susanna. Hi, Pamela. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Very well, thank you. It is fall. I I always think of soups, sweaters, and can we talk about spiders? Oh, yeah. Wait. Are you having a spider issue? Um, I think everybody has spider issues in the fall. Okay, I did not know that that was a thing, but I have these huge spider webs every morning outside my kill, door. Kill me now. Well, but he, they <laughs> okay. So I talked to like a pest person, and he said, "No, keep the spider webs because you want the spiders. The whole point is you want them to be keeping the the bugs and the you know flies from your house." Well, I do know that. Spiders tend to find their mates in the fall, okay. so they're a little bit more active, whereas in the summer, they're kind of hiding in your crevices. In the fall, they go out to get a little boom, shakalaka. Gross. I know. Which, by the way, I found like two baby, baby ones in my bed, which I'm in like- your bed? Yeah, I'm like, I'm killing the newborn, yeah. so mama and papa have to be somewhere. That's so gross. What that? It's like that, do you remember that movie, Arachnophobia? I have arachnophobia and the thought someone said to me the other day, I think it was one of my kids said that while you sleep, you eat like spiders and like bugs kind of of go in your mouth or in your nose or or maybe in your ear. But I wonder what it is specifically about spiders. I mean, of course there are a few that are poisonous, not ones that live, you know, where we are in New England, but why are, is it just, why are spiders so scary? Yeah. I don't know. I kind of never understood why people love squirrels, but they don't like rats. Right. I kind of understand that. (laughs) I mean, why? Because a squirrel has like a hair. I don't like squirrels, by the way. (laughs) I don't think that people necessarily like squirrels more than rats. (laughs) <laughs> like squirrels are the rats of the outside. <laughs> oh, it's not like anyone's like, I really, this beautiful squirrel hair throw. Oh my God. <laughs> or like, I love my squirrel hair vest. Okay, wait, can I tell you something funny about squirrels? What? So did you know that the gray squirrel evolved only recently? There used to be white and black squirrels and the gray squirrel evolved with the urbanization of, oh, so uh, they could just get they could just get lost camouflage, in, yeah. survival of the fittest. It was like one of those lessons from like you know biology that I actually remember huh. is the squirrel, the you know the Darwinism, the squirrel selection. Well, why can't spiders do the same thing like <laughs> like get, camouflage? Well, get cuter. I have a good friend whose first experience here. Um, she moved from the city like a year before I did. And I called her and I was like, how's it going? And she was like, um, it's okay. There was a flying squirrel that let loose in my house the other day, came down the chimney. And she was like, oh, that so- and a bat would probably, I bat. would, I, I would just, yeah. I, yeah. I would move out. Yeah. I would call the exterminator and then I would say, I would say to to my husband like no we have to change yeah. like change everything before yeah. I move in. Yeah. It I totally remember freaks me out. as a child growing up having there was a bat in our house and my dad getting putting on like seven <laughs> coats like a few um you know winter caps and two tennis oh rackets my God. and going and it, we were all like standing in the hallway like daddy's going upstairs to get the bat you know we hear this like clanging i you know that was really scary and that was my first you know kind of under the first time that anyone had explained rabies to me and talk about terrifying oh totally Ooh. but i had a friend who once told me that her husband that they had a bat in in their house and that the husband made her go in to kill it or catch it. Yeah. I looked at her and I was like, grounds for... For yeah. at least separation yeah. and divorce would come next. How about annulment? I think everyone would be like, this was, this marriage was, you know, founded on a, on a total. I couldn't you know. even, I couldn't 
take it in that her husband would make her go into a room that's, with a that, bat. I know that is that's insane. So anyway, anyway. so so let's talk uh, new books. Yes, um, you know I have a special place in my heart for Markham Roberts. I know. So when his new when the new book came out. Which, by the way, I actually had a dream last night that I met, like, the Markham Roberts team in my dream. Okay. Because in my in in my uh, Markham, dream, Markham, come to our podcast yes. so that Pam's dream can come true. Oh God! Even the cover. I know the cover. I know it's just the the font, the 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 whole thing. I know, and look at how the side of it is sort of faux bois. Oh. Gorgeous. And then the inside, I, I just sort of, by the way, there are some interior decorating or interior design books where I'll just sort of look at the book yep. picture and just kind of skip over the text. Right. I'm reading every word. I know. Of his book. This is a Bible, people. Okay, so I love, there's a section where he talks about, like, you know, his requirements for travel. It's hilarious. It's sort of an inset. So I don't know if you got there yet. I am, I'm only in, like, I'm not, I'm only into a couple chapters because really, I am. You're literally taking it all in. But one of the things someone said in the beginning of the book was that Markham is not opposed to sort of the high low like yeah he can find something online easy yep. easy ship and then of course he finds the great antiques but what's even more interesting about his interiors that even though he he's okay with that high low there's no low in any part of his interior i mean right let's be i real. mean i i yeah. did notice a few products you did that i was like oh i know where that's from okay i so i it's funny that you say that because i was also trying to Just find a to few find well, a few they I had, always do they, I always look for that they had the Bojé mirror that I oh, love I I that love I that, that's at our store um I saw a few pieces here and there I think that he had like maybe a Serena and Lily um rattan bar right some of there are some other of those rattan um wicker pieces that look like it they're from a company like mainly baskets yes or, yeah I mean they're you know it's great. I it's think it's just it's phenomenal. People buy this book. Buy the book, and you know they're so we're, we're lucky this fall because there are a number of books coming out, and I don't know if it's because of the pandemic or if these these books were you know long before long overdue conceived, for these people. Yes, but you know it seems like everyone's coming out with their second book. Um, so at some point we'll have Mark Sykes, and I know we're going to have Katie Ritter. Um, but I know Markham. I know Markham's your boy. Well, I, know. I mean. First of all, I love that he really highlights some of the great antiques yep. of our time. And you know, his husband is an antiques dealer. Yes. So, I mean, that's which, what a great which, and, partnership. And they also have a home, right, in yes. upstate New York? They have two. So they have, they both, they have two old homes. They have one on the... In, um, on the Puget Sound right. in, in Washington, right. and then they have ha- one upstate New York, and both, you know, both of those homes, I think they, you know, just have such beautiful, I know. Oh, yep. There the we cur- go. The Curry and Com- Oh, I the love the Antibes. Yes. yes, the Antibes light fixture. Um, so, so this book is worth every dollar that yes. you spend on it, people. And the other thing that I notice about his work, which I think is so timely in today's interiors, yeah. is there is definitely sort of a pendulum shift towards the brown furniture. Yeah. Um, the warmer tones and yep. let and and having said that, let's talk a little bit about what our gussy is today. Yeah, because it's important. Yep. How do you transition your home? How do you give your home the fall facelift? Yep. And I was going through my sort of, you know, habits yep. for my own personal home, and there's a few things I'd love to share with people that make me feel like my home has. Is in fall. Wait, are we doing? Are, should Chris do the? Yeah, should we, I mean, are we doing the gussy? Can we are do we there? the Van, Vanna? The Vanna White. There we go. You have solved the puzzle, <laughs> right? Exa- oh, that's right. So let's just say everybody has their lists of things that make their home, their abode, more special in the fall. Um, for me, a couple of my quick fixes is. Well, I mean, I love to change the mat on my front doorstep. Totally. 
I mean, it's, we yeah. change our planters out. We add yeah. pumpkins. We add colorful fall foliage. Foliage. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. But the mat is important. I agree. You know, and sometimes, by the way, you can go to like Target and Home Goods and some other places, um, and you can get funny little sayings. Yeah. So yeah, you know, it doesn't have to be the most expensive mat. Well, right. And I have a good friend who's from Texas, and she has a howdy mat. Yeah. And I love that. I love that. You know, she brings that out in in the fall, and it's like a nice thick mat. I also like to change my right when you walk in my entryway carpet. So I often have one of those jute carpets that's braided. Um, and listen, they, they are not super expensive and they, uh, they last a season. Right. And, and, or then my dog has chewed them or my kids have totally soiled them. But so I will change that out. I will move that out and I will put in a thicker wool runner or, you know, a something to get the dirt. Something to get the dirt. Yeah, to capture the dirt. Something that captures the dirt, but also, you know, looks cute and, and feels warm. Homey. 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 It's all about feeling mm-hmm. homey, you know? Certainly in these times when we might be spending more time in our home than I we expected. Know. So easy thing to do. Um, add texture to your floors, especially your hardwood floors. Oh, and by the way, you can do that. Two, you know, even if it's layering it on another carpet, right? Bring it, bring we, you know, we talked the other week about flocatis, you know, bring mm-hmm. a, a warm, cozy flocati. And didn't you say that you put a carpet in your son's? My son's room in the summer, he has just hardwood floors. Yeah. And then I will bring in a small area rug like an old Persian rug or right. a Turkish rug right. and layer it. I am on the hunt right now for one for my bathroom because I find in the winter my uh, my feet are freezing. Uh, yeah. yeah, porcelain t- tiles, yeah. cold tiles are the worst. Or you could have heated floors. Like, Well, that's, are you going to do I, that? Well, I have it now. When oh. I did my last renovation, nice. I got the heated floor because... And you're going to do that in your new house? Yes, but I think also I'm going to do the heated toilet seat. That is too much. Is that gross? Well, it's not even that it's gross. That reminds me of, okay, so when we were having babies, they had those like wipe warmers, <laughs> you know? Yeah, like so one. That, of course you did. Of course. But I had I, all the accessories to My sure. husband was sort of like, okay, like, you the know. The baby's going to get used to the warm. Get used to the warm. Yes. And then, you know, and then, so, you no, know, my baby's had like ass cold. Like, <laughs> you're you like, know, smack like. It. Yes, just like cold, you know, oh God, I'm so happy we're over those baby wipe phases. Okay, so maybe, okay, maybe I won't do a warm toilet seat, but maybe those like, uh, what are those Toto toilets that also, actually- you were the one who was saying that you were trying to reduce automation. I feel like that flies. Some of the, remember you said some- No, with certain things. Okay, but also some of the things in life that you have to work hard <laughs> and you know, that maybe endure a little- work or pain can be some of the greatest joys. So maybe sitting down on a, on a cold, cold throne by you be, know, right. Yeah, exactly. Okay. okay. Uh, another thing that I love to do is change out the linens yes. in, in my house. So yeah. often I will, um, go to say like home goods and yeah. get, you know, plaid sheets for the boys oh, or something cute. warm. You change the sheets I do. Too. I do. Uh, the duvet, I, I put out a warmer duvet for them because in the summer, Obviously, it's just like a small blanket. So we get the, you know, the down feather duvet. Yep. And then I will pick up twin, it's just the the fitted sheet that I'll do. Yep. In a fun, like, plaid. Right. And that can be, you. there are, you know, listen, first of all, I think just changing your linens up generally is something people often overlook. Right. It's probably a lot healthier to, and, you know, I know people worry about waste. And it saves energy. Yeah, it does. Um, So I do, what I do for my girls is I put out those big like furry blankets not squirrel fur um but you know you, the, the faux fur blanket the faux, okay oh the faux fur my daughter has two of them Wait, and my don't dog you loves remember them the time that we were at high point and um our colleague who now lives in australia sam hi sam if you're listening <laughs> hi, sam. hi sam our colleague sam and i got like 
you know, like totally taken in by like the fabulous fur people. Yes. And we you were, were buying like fabulous fur jackets. We, I bought so many fabulous <laughs> fur. You're like, I will have the sable. Right. And I will I, have so the chinchilla. Meanwhile, Pam is like running around. You're like running around looking for stuff for the store and like actually, see, this, this is what happens occasionally at High Point. <laughs> we all get on these little tangents and she's like, where's Sam? Where's Susanna? And Francesca's like, they're still at fabulous furs. <laughs> and I, we bought, so, so I have those furs. I know you bought like 30 of them. We bought not quite, but a lot. And so no, it was like I 15 will, each. Okay. And will, they all came to the store, the store and I yes. looked at this box yes. of faux furs yeah. and I'm like, whose is this? Yes. I know you did. And they were ours. And sometimes we make mistakes. And here's what I will say. And is, they're not a mistake. Well, no, but you, okay. But I will. So here's my feeling about this. Okay. Okay. Is that I don't want to say that they were mistakes, but they are very heavy, very heavy, not easy to wash not, and not easy to wash and not easy to fold. So sometimes they look messy. Now, having said that, I, you know, have sort of gotten over that and, you know, my girls love it. And listen, it's cold in New England in the winter. So to have that really heavy extra layer is really nice. It is. Um, I'm not a big fan of the faux fur on my daughter's bed. Okay. Um, I just, it just looks really messy. I know. That's what I'm saying. And usually the dog is wrapped up in it. Yeah. Yeah. And I just think about his dirty little paws getting into it. And well, then she's I sleeping don't like with it. Is that they'll have a snack and then like a few of those, like the little fur <laughs> threads will get like stuck together. And then, you know, I, you, I try to spot clean with like a, but you know, you're like, you, you run your hand on it and you're like, Ooh, sticky, you yeah. know, but that's not, that's not good. But so in terms of your linens, what about like your table linens? Do you do something yes. special so, there? Um, I don't use a lot of table linens unless I'm entertaining, but I will change my placemats, which is a very easy thing to do. So I have sort of the summer placemats, which of course are, you know, the straw, the jute, things like that. And then I might pull out like the red, the green, the plaids, things like that. Another thing. Do you have fabric placemats? I mean, do you No, I don't. No, me neither. I don't. I use the wipeable wipeable ones because of the kids. That's a cute idea, though, to get, you know, um, like a plaid um, or, you know, a gingham or something that has sort of more autumnal colors or schemes to it. That's a good idea. And and not, as you said, a way of bringing fall in, but not, not like, budget-friendly. Budget-friendly. Yeah. Um, and then I will also change the towels in my bathroom. Like Not not all of them. I mean, I still use certain towels. Like, I have Matuk or I have right. a... But I, I t- generally will change the hand towels. Yeah. And I often freshen up my washcloths. Well, by the way, that's just something. Because it's, you, you know, I just anyway. buy them in yeah. stacks of yeah. white washcloths. Yep. And then as soon as there's a little stain, it's like, yep. Well, it's out. It goes to the cleaning lady. It's really hard to have white towels because I feel like my makeup is constantly staining the towels. Um, but OxyClean can take out most of it. It can. I, I personally prefer white towels because yeah. I'd like to know if it's stained or dirty. Right. And every time I go to a hotel where they have like dark towels, I kind of look well, yeah. strangely at it. Like I mean, what's going on? What's in those towels? You can't go down that road with hotels. Because anytime you do, I mean, I think really about that gross. Oprah where like that person wore, oh, the, please. wore those glasses. <laughs> and he's like, <laughs> put on the glasses. And then it they was They highlight like, the room and everything's just infested. Fecal matter. Oh, please. Please. Okay. <laughs> the, well, let's not go down this road. Other emissions from we, human bodies. We talked about spiders and squirrels. We I do know. not need to talk about semen. Okay. Oh, <laughs> yeah. No, I I. I, I agree. Well, so, okay. <laughs> oh, She's like, all right, just drop yeah, that this one. Week. Listen, people, this is not our Sancerre, you know, uh, we will do a show with yeah, some Yeah, Sancerre Saturday. This We've isn't that, but, you know, it's just, we're, we're just, we're just feeling very, you know, we're very. Free. Yes. Free there. today. And the, <laughs> free association. Yeah. The next thing, uh, can we just talk about number three, accessories? Yeah. Changing your accessories. Yes. So out goes a lot for me. This is not for everyone. So for me, out goes the sort of coral, the white porcelain, the sort of lighter colors. Right. And you're talking like small decor accessories. I'm talking about bookshelves. Yep. Things like that in my my family room. Okay. So I will change that out. I'll get, I'll put away the blue and white. You will. I will. 
I, I, I now, generally feel that's a little too spring summer for me. And then I go towards a great vintage cloisonne vase or right. a wonderful brass bowl. Okay, but where do you put that stuff? Yes. I have, um, I just get the plastic containers. Okay. And I basically, you know, some people decorate for holiday where yeah. they go crazy with like nutcrackers and greens. Right. I kind of do that with my accessories. Wow. You are, I, you are aspirational. But I don't, I, but I don't do like, I won't wrap the house in garland. Right, right, right. I don't do that. But I will put out. This is your version. This of, is my version. Yeah. I will put out great picture frames with fresh photos. I will put. I love that idea. Put books on the table. Right. I will put a brass hurricane with like a three wick candle. Right. So I, so before we get to candles, cause I feel like that's a big, um, sort of easy way to bring fall in. Um, and you know, I, that, that to me is like the signifier of, of fall. Um, I just, just on your note, sort of, I think I have a slightly less rigorous changing, um, going on, but I will change the books. So, you know, I have lots of, you know, almost every surface in my house is flat surfaces covered with books because I love books and I collect decorating books and uh, fashion books and photography books. And so I will put the the blues and the pales and the corals and the sort of colors that evoke summer. I will put those on the bottom and I will layer you know, up the top. Layer I up do the that top. as well. Put and, the jewel toned yes. colored books in the top. Bring out the throws, the fabulous, you know, sometimes furs. the furs, but, you know, also just, you know, I'll go and I'll, and I'll buy a fresh, um, you know, mohair throw or just something to bring out. And, you know, my kids, I have a, I have a basket with, um, throws that are sort of rolled up that the kids can just grab. If I always add a basket. I always bring out baskets yes. for, for the blankets yeah. because I don't always like to see them when I get home on the couch. Yep. So I'll just tell the kids, listen, throw it in the basket and I'm yep. kind of fine if it's contained there. Yeah. But I think it's just so easy, even if you don't have as sort of, um, you know, as a, as organized a system as you have, it's so easy to switch your books out, you know, put things like sort of emphasize certain things and de-emphasize other things. And just, you know, it's kind of like putting like new toys at the top of Absolutely. the basket. Absolutely. So, even a simple wood bowl can change your yeah. decor. Yeah. Um, you know, these are these are great way great ways to like add texture and color and yeah. warmth. Yep. Without well, and breaking you know, the budget. We had a new we we did it as you know, we did a new office um this summer and it was you home know, office. A new home office, mm-hmm. correct. And one of the things that that I it was we sort of really were infused by the summer, all the summer feels. And now that it's getting to fall, I'm like, you know what? That window seat really needs pillows. You know, I want to bring a great throw in or an ottoman and make sure that the room has resonance and translates into the The winter. The next season. So can we just talk about one takeaway from this? And that would be don't decorate your whole house in one season. Very true. I mean, Very if this true. is not yes. just the standard that's a great, that's line, a great point. because yeah. you won't always be in the summer no. and you will not always be in the winter. Right. And there are, as my husband likes to call this weather, it's the shoulder weather. Yes. I don't understand why it's called shoulder weather. I don't know. Is that like an old saying? It is. I like that. He says it's a shoulder weather where it's sort of like in the mornings it's chilly, but in the afternoon. Greg is like old timey. Right. I like right. it. Well, no, you're right. And that, you know, very much that was, I think, the challenge to living in a seasonal climate where you are really sort of experiencing all these different seasons is to, to make your home adaptable in these small ways so that they feel like they are evoking what you what what you want to say and what you want to feel like in those seasons. Right. So, you know, I so can't so okay, now we can do candles. Candles, candles are huge. You're like a I feel like you I are, love candles. I burn candles every single day. I know. Me I have started to do that like since since our sort of partnership since like candles are big for me. Um I love room sprays. Oh, so Agaria I, okay. makes a beautiful bitter orange room spray, which we carry here at Trevari. That's interesting. Which is I, fabulous. It's I, just, you know, the sticks. Yeah. 
Love oh, that. Oh, okay, got it. So it's it's not. It's basically it's like a diffuser. Yes. Yes. Okay, got it's, it. I thought. You oh, at, no, no, no. At, no, they oh, do and that, they and do then that. they okay. have. You can layer it. It's like your body scent. You know, you yeah. have the lotion, and then you layer yes. with the perfume. Yes. There are some home scents you do the same. You have the stick. Yeah. And then you have like sort of the scent. Well, by the way, if you listen, you and I do it on a daily basis because this is our business, and right. you know, and we're you know. We're constantly surrounded by these amazing scents. But um, one, one, just another great tip for people is if you are hosting, if you're host, and again, I know we're we're in pandemic right now, so you know, hopefully, burn the candle you know, an hour before people yes, arrive. Hello, yes, hello, candles. Like you know, the the what yes. your house smells like is a huge part of you know infusing. The, and one of the first things I did when I moved here um, was I went to someone's house for a trunk show, and I walked in, and it it was it was. October and it had that wonderful um, pumpkin spice smell and I was like, what is that smell? And, and I, I hate that smell. Oh, see, I love. That. I think I, Starbucks ruined it for me. Oh, really? With oh, the, pumpkin the pumpkin spice. spice. Yes, oh, and it's I everyone's love. pumpkin, pumpkin and yeah. maple. And so I like like cedar, tobacco. I, know you do. You I like, like some the of the. Yeah. Is that why you don't sell it here? Pumpkin spice. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's so funny. And also it reminds it. me of like the cheap candles, the I, ones that have like the paraffin. Okay, well, let like me tell the, you. What is what is that company that has the I know the exactly jar? what you're talking about. And let Ugh. me tell you, this is about like the, you know, this is another show. But my girls, one of the things they love to do is we live in Old Greenwich. They love to walk to town. And it's sort of cute. It's like a little freedom that they have. Um, and I'll give them like a little money or they'll take their allowance money. But of course, inevitably, they go to CVS and they come back. Oh, with, with a candle. They come up with crap. <laughs> and it's almost always a disgusting candle with one. And you know, oh, mommy, smell please, this. It please. smells like butterscotch. I understand and I'm like, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, let's like, so, same with my daughter but, at Bath and but Body. Works. I will just to be like, just to like be equal opportunity here. I love pumpkin spice. Okay, so I like the high end. It's a spice it's a little candles. pedestrian for so, me. Okay, well, I'm not everyone. Little, I like you know. Not uh, everyone is as esoteric as you are, Pam. <laughs> we, we you know we can try, but and for, the other and the other thing that's really important. Make sure you're candle not only smells good but it has a nice vessel yes so some candle bodies or some candle holders just some companies do it beautifully but if they don't you can get though you can do smaller votives and absolutely and get, drop it into a yeah, hurricane yeah, even yeah. you know a small hurricane and just you yep. know one of the things i love about fall is being able to change out my artwork as well so do you change, are you talking like artwork on your wall? Um, maybe a small, easy piece. Okay. But more like this small, uh, piece of art that's on an easel on my tabletop. So right, that, and that, you know, I, it's on my to-do list to go and grab a few tabletop easels because oh that was, you would set it, it, it is a my idea. It is my Probably number one accessory. I know it is, and you have a few right now in the front of the store. I do I love it. I yeah. do. I, I. They come in small, medium, and large. I. You can do them in silver or brass. I prefer the brass I easel. So love it's brass. adjustable, so the height of the the uh, top yeah. and the bottom adjust. Yeah, and I love small pieces of art. And often, I times I don't want to layer in a small piece with a you know, in a room, yeah, it might be just too small, right? but I want it to have a special place. Right. So I will put an easel on a table. This is like a genius move. You get, um, you know, you have a console, yep. you stack up your books, right? you have a small easel, you put your favorite piece of art and it doesn't need to be a night. It doesn't need to be like a perfect, perfected piece of art, right? right? It doesn't need to be like a great right. little piece of art. It could be a, a card. It could be a drawing from your child, or it could be your favorite watercolor or acrylic. Right. right. Um, if it's a, if it's a funny card or if it's a piece of art from my child, I will put it in acrylic frame, you yes. know, those magnetic acrylic yes. frames. Yeah. So I will take the artwork, I will put it in the acrylic frame, and then I will put it in the easel. Wait, so it so stands the, up. Do you, so do the easels that you're talking about, do they come with the acrylic frame no. and the easel? Okay, so No, so I buy, right. I buy a wonderful acrylic frame from a company that I can actually, we can put on our blog. Awesome. And they have one that's 
very simple, thin. It's like right? an eight by ten. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And it's magnetic in the corners, so it, you just sort of separate it Great. like you would, yeah. you know, sticky paper. And put your artwork in. Yep. And then boom. And sometimes you can actually turn it over if you have. Right. You can flip it mm-hmm. if you have, and mm-hmm. then you ha- also. You source the easel as well that you can place yep. the, mm-hmm. yeah. I, I generally will um, go oversized with my easel. Yep. But it depends on my lamp size. I need to go check out the easels that you have downstairs They're now. They're so is, wonderful. Well, it's just now, you know, what a, I think that's such a great idea for um, for fall and for being, again, you know, I know we have talked about this before and all the holes in my walls, but I just love the idea of being able to switch things out. And maybe you have a folder where, where you have like great prints or great, great. artwork yep. and you can kind of yep. pop them in. If you have maybe something for Christmas, even yeah. like your child's drawing or yeah. their letter to Sam. Santa. Yeah. Oh, that's cute. something like I that. Like the you know, to Santa. The thing about design is it's always evolving, and your interiors have to reflect that. And the easier, you know, the easier things to do are things like acrylic frames. Yeah. You know, um, yeah. changing out artwork, changing out pillows, right. changing well, out blankets. We talk about this so often about how, like, you change your shoes, you change your clothes, uh, your handbags, you know, right? Your handbags, and you know, I think people like. They balk at the the idea of the home as something that can have facelifts and that, you know, something that, you know, you only, I think people feel like, well, I'm only going to fix it or change it if it's wrong. And I think what we find that there's so much joy in reimagining things in these small ways. Right. In these budget-friendly ways that doesn't have to be, Right, like you know, move your furniture around. Well, right, exactly. Move it around during yeah. during the fall and the summer and yeah. add some poofs. And if yeah. you can't even afford to buy new furniture or you can't afford to, to bring in expensive candles, yeah. just changing, take your, your pillows that might be on a chair, put them on your couch, right. vice versa. Go outside and bring in pine cones. And I know we're going to talk uh, about magnolias. Florals. Oh, yeah. magnolia is so um, great. Yeah, easy, easy yeah. found well, should objects. We, should we do our florals since we're, since we're talking about yes. it anyway? Um, um, arrangements. Um, I love to literally. A fall wreath. Uh, yes, a fall wreath is great. And you know what is also wonderful? If your fall wreath is not something that you have to sort of throw away, you can keep. Like, look for wreaths that have things like feathers yeah. and dried pieces on them. Oh, my God. That reminds me of when we had that wreath-making <laughs> night. Do you Which remember is one that? of my favorite things to do in the winter. Yeah, that, just that before the rush of the holidays is fun. get my girlfriends together yeah. for a wreath making session. Okay, so that was fun. I've been to two wreath making sessions. Not as fun as ours. Well, no. So one of the wreath making was yours. Okay. And that was a lot of fun. And I went to one other. Um, don't worry. Didn't hold a candle to your wreath making. But I did like every time. I, I, I mean, I had to just laugh a little bit on the inside because I feel like a 1950s housewife, like putting together my wreath, you know, right. I don't know, like think of an icon who's, you know, so I, I love the, I, I love the a, idea of you spearheading <laughs> a wreath making like, you know, I love doing stuff like that. No, it's great. And I think that's the whole point is that we, you know, what, like, we don't have to be just one thing. We can be like interesting and business owners and uh, all of this stuff. And we can also have these like private passions and hobbies that right. are very, you know, sort of, you know, homemakery. And I also think it's really important when you get together, excuse me, with your girlfriends is to do some sort of um, fun, inspirational activities yeah. other than just breaking open the wine. Right. And, right. Although you know, there was a fair amount of that too at the wreath. Oh, place. no, no, no. We drank. But you know what was so funny too was I feel like the, the women at the garden center weren't <laughs> quite prepared for us. Like we came in, you know, we brought and in And we were our grabbing wine. all their expensive I little know. Well, so I, I, I remember like, like Francesca was like, Susanna, stop hoarding the birds. Because <laughs> I was like, I kept pulling over those like little sparkly birds. And I, I have to say my wreath ended up being very gaudy and and oh mine was so beautiful course, I know and and I was just sort of like you know I think I it was, was your first time well, I was so overwhelmed by all the beautiful accessory choices <laughs> that it was sort You're of like, like I will have I birds and 
can I squeeze bells. another? Yes, can I squeeze <laughs> another bird in there? And like, ooh, there are bells. So I just kept like adding more and more. And I do, this is a slightly somewhat of a metaphor for decorating <laughs> because, you know, and this just goes to show, and I know we did a, uh, I feel like we did a show on planning. Um, you know, we touched, we talked about sort of starting a design project, but one of the things you don't want to do is not have a plan and just kind of go out there and grab all the pretty things because that is where you end up with too many sparkly birds, you yes. know, or too many chairs. I mean, Pam, like how much furniture have I had to give away or repurpose? I, or I know. I mean, I, know. I have a couple of your pieces I, that you gave away. I know because I, you know, think that, you know, I think my first impulse was, oh, there's just so many beautiful things in the world. I want them all. But if you, if you kind of Marie Kondo, like it comes in the home, you, something goes out because yes. that was our last. Yes. And that's fussy. where I am now. I believe in that. So often I will change a chair or if I see something that's more inspirational. Yes. Or even for me, it's like, a better piece. I'm Ooh. always upping my game. And you had said that to me. You had said, you know, listen, decorating a whole house is overwhelming. You don't necessarily have the budget to do all that you want to do. And sometimes you do have placeholders that you need because they're practical. But over time, as you collect better pieces, right. you can sort of move those along. But but that's, can we just say yeah. that's very difficult in our society today yeah. to have patience. Very difficult. To understand that Rome wasn't built in a day, that yeah. these great decorators, yeah. you know, that are, are putting together rooms that are just so awe-inspiring, a lot of the times these people have these pieces or Yes. collected these pieces yes. or these decorators are going out and and sourcing these wonderful items. Yeah. It's so important because I think in terms of who we are as as people, you know, we feel like it's instagrammable, it's pinterestable. Yes. It's like we snap our fingers that's everything I want. I'm going to go out and yes. buy it. Yes. And that goes back to one of our gussies where I said about you know, a well-decorated home does not yes. make a happy home I or a happy, yeah. an unhappy home does not, yes. whatever. I can't remember well, what it was. Yes, it does go back. And it also just, again, like this, the, the, the metaphor of the wreath and just, you know, you take, take your time, take your time, have a plan, think it through. And so you're going to have to have another wreath making so that, that I can, I can oh yeah, we should I probably film that. Yeah. No, we I don't should. think the ladies really want me back. No, I don't think they 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 I think they, they were, were little, sort of, they were like yeah. um we ran out of wine yeah. and all of our yeah. expensive pieces are gone. Well, I know well, cuz I had like you know $40 worth of like glittery birds <laughs> on my wreath. So yeah. I know. Okay, but so just to finish up the florals cuz I feel like we we got this so the wreath but you know how about the idea of just bringing in going to you know um I don't know, Home Depot or your local grocery store and getting some mums get, or, you know, bringing or some pumpkins. Of course. Some, I like the white pumpkins, those gourds, the white love ones. Those. I love at mixing them. And you can pick your own. That's the other thing is if you go to, you know, a pumpkin patch, it's a great fun thing to do with the kids, even, even now in the pandemic, you know, to be outside um, and to go and pick your own pumpkins and bring them home. And, you know, I always put a pumpkin in one of my girls' rooms. And then of course I get like skeeved out that sitting there and I'll, you know, I'll, it'll like last a week or two or so. But I think that, you know, all of that is just a way of making the home feel like, you know, we're honoring fall. Right. Home is where your heart is and home is where, you know, we all might be spending more time yeah. in, yeah. in the next, you know, few months, hopefully yes. not. Yeah. But, uh, you know, make it as great as you can with wonderful special items that you've either collected or found or yeah. you just love. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, keep an open mind when it comes to having your house be a living, breathing thing and sort of adapting for, you know, the, the weather and the, um, and what's going on, you know, outside. So I think is, we, we hit everything. I think we hit it. We got the gussy down. I, I hope did. you guys all enjoyed it. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, guys. Thanks for listening, everyone. Make sure you subscribe to the gussy so you never miss an episode. For more of the gussy, please check out our blog at thegussy.com and follow us on Instagram at the gussy show. See you next time. <laughs>